This is very messy. And I would say to you I'm gonna neaten this up, but that would be a lie. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and today you're keeping me sane while I pack because I, I hate packing. Absolutely hate packing, but I'm about to go on holiday, so I do need to actually get packing this massive suit. Like, it's huge, it's a massive suitcase, and you know, have that ready so I can actually go on holiday. But I hate packing, and I have procrastinated this a lot, so I decided that I would actually make it a bit more interesting for myself and do a packing and QA. I did have a load of questions put in a little while ago when I was doing a thank you for 1000 subscribers, you had a choice between a QA or a bookshelf tour and it was a really tough call between both of those actually bookshelf tour one just by a little bit but I did have a lot of questions submitted so I thought that this would be a fun thing to do it's like I'll ask a question pack a bit that's the idea and it makes it more interesting for myself because I hate hate packing with a vengeance so that's what we're gonna do and hopefully this works and hopefully I get everything packed that I need to get packed my only thing that I've realized is that I have everything on my phone so I have a notes for all the questions that I got asked and a notes page of what I need to pack but I can't look at both at the same time so we're just gonna have to flick between the two consistently. Hopefully you find this interesting, I need something to keep me going guys. Okay so one of the questions I got was have I always been a reader and the answer to that question is yes I have always been a reader. My earliest memories are actually of my mum getting myself and my sisters to act out passages from books so we would have to read them aloud and we would act them out and be the characters and stuff and it was actually like this set from the Little Mermaid books and we would always argue over who got to be Little Mermaid and who got to be Ursula and stuff so we'd always argue over that because nobody wanted to be Flounder or Sebastian <laughs> but yeah so that was I mean that's that was my childhood growing up like that's what we used to do we used to read constantly so for as long as I can remember I have always read. There's been a couple of points in my like, like later adult life where I haven't read as much, where I've been getting busy and stressed out with work. There hasn't been a time where I've never read, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's that's the answer to that one. I, I have always read. Okay, where is my list for stuff I need to pack? Okay, so clothes. You know what would have been smart? Is to actually get the clothes out ready. Instead they're, they're there, but my tripod's in the way. We're gonna do this. Oh, okay. We have a few things, so, bikinis, already packed. I want to say like I was really prepared and stuff, but I'm not, this is just where I keep them because it's easier, so that's done. Yes, I throw everything in, is this going to be neat at all? No, if my partner's watching this, please don't, because you will just give yourself a heart attack. Or anyone that is a bit anal when it comes to packing, I wouldn't watch this, I'm terrible. Oh, also let me close that window, I feel like there's lorries and stuff moving around, hang on. But yeah, okay, so we're going to Thailand, which is really, really hot there. It's like 28 degrees, no, where is it, 30 degrees? Something like that over there at the minute, which I cannot wait for, considering it's like four here. I mean, okay, it's not four degrees in England, but it bloody feels like it. Um, anyway, so I've got some nice dresses, and how long are we even going for? I think we've got five, four days there, uh, because of like when we come in, it's late one evening. So let's say five full days. So I should bring five dresses, but I also plan on doing shopping. And I picked up four, so I guess we're going with four. Honestly, I'm dreadful at packing. I, I hate it so much. And because I've set myself like this is gonna be a fun shopping holiday as well, like that's what he wants to do. And we're going to like this massive shopping center, which I cannot wait for, I'm so excited. I'm kind of even more like, why do I need to pack? I can just buy everything, which is not, the behavior to have but, but yeah and then i'll go with this this one because why not i mean we are going in october don't think they do halloween out there I'm not sure and then another light flowy dress these are just really good because they're light and flowy and it's going to be hot out there which you don't need to know this and then Honestly, this one. I really like this one. It's really nice light. It kind of reminds me a bit of like cottage core esque but it's nice. It's flowy, which actually that looks better with a belt. So I should probably get the belt as well. <sighs> right. I think 
We'll go with two belts and then, I mean, that sounds about right. And I do get cold in the evenings. I know it's meant to be really hot over there, but we've been to Thailand before and I genuinely got cold in the evenings. So I have a couple of these, just like nice shawl things. So I might just take a couple of those as well. We like butterflies, let's do the butterfly. Can I go green or black? Let's go green, I'm holding it. Oh yeah, and this one's got birds and stuff on. And they're just nice, easy to wear. Okay, what's the next question? See, this is great, this is so much more interesting. Just ignore the packing. <laughs> oh, okay, if I could only have five books to read, what would they be? Honestly, that's a bit of a rude question, guys. Like, how could you ask me to narrow it down to just five books? One would have to be Jane Eyre. I, I love Jane Eyre, it's my favourite book by Charlotte Bronte. Let me get it. My bookshelves are here. Hang on. Um, yeah, so Jonah by Charlotte Bronte is definitely one of them. It's a fantastic book. It started my love of classics and while it took years for that love of classics to get to where it is now, it was something that I can always say like ever since I first read it when I was in college, I just fell in love with it. Like it was gothic, it was amazing, it had a brilliant love story to it, we had a really strong female character, there's just so much that I liked. There's so many quotes that really spoke to me, like it was the first time that I can be like, yeah, I connected with that book. So Jane Eyre would be one of those. As for the other four, I'm not sure. I feel, like I want to say um, Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, which is also over there. Hang on. Yeah, it's so Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is my favourite fantasy book. Um, I haven't actually read it in a little while. Um, I keep putting it up because the third book we've been waiting like 15 years for, I really don't think it's ever going to come, which is so sad because I love this so much. But again, this is one that I read in college and I fell in love with it. I absolutely adore the writing style. Everything about it is just so beautiful and lyrical and highly recommend. It's such a fantastic book. We're following Kavo. His parents are killed when he's young and you see him from a young child growing up and so you see him on the streets trying to scrape together a life and how difficult it is to then how he kind of cons his way into this university and sets up this scheme where he ends up making money out of all of it and just like conning his way in. Like, it's very smart, very good. It's him telling his life story as an adult to a chronicler. So basically someone that writes down tales for a living. Um, he's found him and so he's like, okay, fine, give me three days and I'll tell you a story. And each day, each book is a day of Kivoth as an older man telling his story to this person. and. That's fantastic and that's what's so frustrating about book number three is like that's the third day and that's where ah uh, there's so much I think the problem is is there's so much hype around it there's been so much build up to that third and final book but whether we ever get it or not I don't know but regardless I love this book I think it's fantastic so that would definitely be another one. As for the last three, I'm not sure because I I like to mood read too much. Like I can definitely say that these two will always be in my top spot. Like even if it came to rereading them and I actually want to reread both of these soon and I don't find them as good compared to other books that I've read anymore, they would still always hold that top spot just because of how much I connected with these at the time. This would always be up there. If there were other three, I feel like that would be more dependent on my mood. So sorry about the light in this I haven't done this very well but I've got nowhere else to put this suitcase so I feel like at the moment it would be like a murder mystery because I'm loving murder mysteries what one I'm not sure because there's been so many that I really liked and would I ever get bored of rereading the same one I don't know so definitely a murder mystery and then probably another classic but the classic, I don't know what that would be. Would I go for Jane Austen to have something a bit lighter? Or would I go for like Tess of the D'Urbervilles, which kind of was a bit reminiscent of Jane Eyre in how it was done, but it has beautiful portrayal of like the English countryside and stuff. Or Dracula, Dracula I absolutely love. Yeah, see that would be really hard. So, so I can do two and then I'd say the last three would just be dependent on my mood. I think if it was, Today, and then it would probably be A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas, which I'm not going to get that book anymore because it's too much energy. That's just a fantasy romance, love it. Probably Dracula, because I'm really feeling like I really want to reread that. Um, I'm actually thinking that's one of the books I'm going to take on holiday. And then, I don't know whether to go another fantasy, or, or something like actually Song of Achilles. 
by Madeline Miller. There we go. Those three. Those five. So we've got Jane Eyre, Name of the Wind, Dracula, Court of Silver Flames, and Song of Achilles. All five. I'll probably put pictures of the other books up. I just got really lazy. Okay. Pack in. What do I need to pack? Okay, so we did King, did the dresses. Okay. Underwear. That's a good point. We need some of that. Okay, underwear and socks. I never pair up my socks either, so how we've got one, two, three, four, five. I need another sock. Okay, lovely. Right, that's socks and underwear done. Oh, you know what? We are getting there. There is not loads left to pack. And that's when I realise I've forgotten loads of stuff, but never mind. Okay, then we have, if I could invite three people to dinner, who would they be? That's a really good question. I feel like I've kind of got one for characters and then one for authors. Characters would be Manon from Sarah J Mars. She's from the Throne of Glass series. Manon is hilarious. I think that'd be great with Nesta from the Court of Silver Flames. And then add that in with Bryce. So I think those three, so I've chose each one of a main character from Sarah J Mars's different series. So she has three different series and I think they'd be great. I just feel like that would be really interesting. Um, but as authors, it would have to be Charlotte Bronte. Like if it could be anybody ever, it would be, have to be Charlotte Bronte because I love Jane Eyre so much. So I feel like Charlotte Bronte would be so interesting. I've got loads of non-fiction books about her that I'm going to be reading that I think would just be fantastic to actually ask her in person all of these questions. And then Jane Austen because I've heard that Charlotte Bronte said some not so nice things about Jane Austen's work so it'd be lovely just to see those two and just see how they get on, see with the drama, the tea that involves. Um, and then, then maybe Agatha Christie actually, because I really want to know where did she go during that time. So those three. So if it was authors, it would be Charlotte Bronte, Jane Austen, Agatha Christie. And if it was characters, then it would be three from Sarah J. Mars World. Just because I want to see the chaos unravel clearly as this is my chaos. Uh, you know what, honestly, for an organized person, the minute we come to holidays, that goes out the window. Cause I'm like, I'm on holiday doesn't matter if I'm not in the country yet. This is for holiday, so this does not get organized. Right, I need a top to wear on the way back, but also it needs to, this is the problem because it gets so hot, but it's so cold here. So we layer up and then when we get to Thailand, like when we're about to land, I take off all the layers. So that means I just need a top that I can just layer up with that isn't too hot to wear. Anyway, so I need to get that a bag, my journal and stationery because I actually, I love journaling. I don't get loads of time to do it as often as I would like, but one thing I did do before filming this was actually get it ready. So I've just taken out the part of the journal that I'm actually working on at the moment. So I've got a little bit left and I've got a pencil case full of stationery. So in here I've got loads of like stickers and paper and things, different things that I want to use just to layer it up because I do kind of like a junk journaling where I have it layered up with like papers like collages and stickers and all sorts of stuff and then I'll do a little bit where I write so that's that's what I normally do but I actually did already get that in there so I've already got a pen and stuff like that so that's done so let me actually put that in there and then I'll get my bag and stuff that I want to bring okay so I'm thinking this bag is a really nice little bag it's a Cambridge satchel bag I absolutely love these bags, they're my favourite type of bag. So I'm thinking nice pink one for holiday, just a nice little crop top which I can layer up with jumpers and stuff on the way back. Perfect, what else do we need? Ooh, okay, so we need card games and books, but before we get that, let's do another question. Okay, you know what, let's do another couple of questions because I feel like I'm almost unpacking. Am I a vegetarian? No. I actually had this question when I met Eric in person where he asked me like, am I a vegan or what? Because sometimes I'll cook like vegan meals and then I'll have like cheese or tuna or stuff like that. Um, and the short answer is no, I'm not vegetarian or vegan. I just don't have loads of space in the fridge to keep loads of meat and stuff. And plus I don't actually like eating loads of meat. I used to, but now that I do my own meals separate, cause like my mom and that they'll have meat on a regular basis. Now that I do my own meals separately and I don't have much meat, I feel so much healthier in myself. So no, I will happily eat meat and stuff. Like when we go to a restaurant with my partner in that, I will have meat, but I just, don't particularly like cooking it and I do find it healthier just to have less of it. So 
what is my job? Quite a few of you know that I changed jobs earlier this year. So I used to work for an opticians and then at the start of the year I changed to a new job. So I actually work for a train company now. So I tell the trains when to go. I hold up a little pad and it goes, you can go now. It's a really easy, chill job. I love working outside, even though it's horrible in the cold and rain. I prefer it so much like I don't get anywhere as bad like headaches that I used to because I used to get really bad headaches when I was working in the opticians I think from all the fluorescent lighting I don't get that anymore so that's lovely um the work itself I really enjoy like it's really chill I've got great people that I work with I just I hate that it's shift work that's been the biggest challenge for me is is the cold and shift work that's definitely been the hardest part but otherwise it's an okay job it's a job it pays the bills that's what you need um and did I go to uni no, I did not go to university. I did think about it, but I had no idea what I wanted to do. And at the time I just wanted to work. Um, and I'm really pleased I did that because if I had gone to university, then I wouldn't be with my partner. I met him in my first job, which was actually at McDonald's, <laughs> um, doing night shift work there. And if I'd gone to university, then we wouldn't still be together now. Wouldn't, it just wouldn't have worked out that way. So I didn't, but I mean, do I regret it? sometimes but then other times no because I just see it as I wouldn't have done anything with it and it's a lot of debt like a lot of debt and I'm really happy with where I am now and I don't even know what I would have done because back then I was really heavily into art I was also really interested in psychology and English literature I just didn't feel like I was smart enough to do even though I did well at school with English literature and like doing well in college with it I don't know, I just never felt like I was good enough for it. So yeah, no, no, I never did. And I don't, don't really regret that either. Okay, so books and games. Okay, so the games are the easy part. One of these is gonna go into my bag for the flight, which I think, I'm not sure. This one's definitely going in. So this one is Micro Macro Crime City. And uh, this one is basically you get a massive map and it's kind of like a where's Wally but without the colour and instead of finding Wally you've got to solve a crime so you're following the clues to this crime you've got to find them on the map follow their routes and work out why they did it and stuff it's it's honestly as fun some of them are really hard some of them are really easy it's just a bit of harmless fun so that one will be coming and then I've got these two so we have Monopoly the card game which this is really fun. We played this in really hard mode. We were really quite brutal to each other at first. But again, this is like a five to 15 minute long game. Can be longer if you do what we do, which would be really quite brutal. And then a card game that we haven't played yet, but one that I picked up specifically for this trip is Agatha Christie's Death on the Cards. Not sure what this one is because I haven't actually played it, but there is a murder and all the suspects are gathered around the table. Using detective skills, you must work together to unmask the murderer. A whodunit thing. I might put this one away because we haven't played it yet and then have that one for the flight. And then I've also got my Switch, which I'm just debating. Do I want to bring that on the flight? I don't think I will, but I'll bring it anyway. I'll chuck it in the case. Um, so that one will come with me. And then books. So I do have, obviously, my TBR for the month. And I do have two books that I definitely want to take with me. And let me get those. Okay, so one of the books that's definitely coming with me is Dracula. Because I'm doing a reread of this for October. I'm thinking this is the one I'm going to keep in my bag and read Go In There. Because we do have a 12 hour long flight. I actually plan on sleeping most of it, to be quite honest. But always bring a book with me just in case. So I think that one's going to stay my hand luggage and then the other book I'm bringing with me is Zelda by Nancy Milford which is the non-fiction all about Zelda Fitzgerald's life so that's definitely one that I want to bring with me I think this would just be nice just to read of a morning by the pool chilling out so that's one that I'm taking which let me put it in here and I need a bookmark hang on okay so bookmark book that's all in there and then I do want to take an extra one because I am gone for a week but we do have the flight there, the flight back, and then the whole time we're there. So I feel like bringing an extra one, but I don't know which one. I would take the one that you guys are choosing for the month, but I don't think... I mean, it's not even been a week for the votes to tally up on that, so I feel a bit bad if I took that one. Let me see what I've got. Well, four of the books I'm not bringing with me because that's for the 24-hour readathon, which is when I get back. The Bullet That Missed is a buddy read, and that's when I get back. Oh, that's it, really. I've got the short story collection, which I might bring 
the mysteries of the yellow room that's it so do i just bring a mood read with me because i might bring the short story collection which if i do that then that's going to be last minute packing kind of want something a little bit lighter but i don't know exactly what or maybe i will just tally up the votes let me just tally up the votes so we'll see where they're standing of the ones that you guys had to choose between so that was either how we fall apart or dark and shallow lies so let me tally up those votes and then We'll bring that one as a lighter bit my camera rudely cut out clearly this has taken me longer than i thought uh but yeah but that way i've got a classic a non-fiction and then something lighter so how we fall apart how we fall apart how we fall apart dark and shallow lies has one eight okay so dark and shallow lies is winning so we'll take that one and then if how we fall apart brings up I've, I've got enough time that i should be able to read that as well this month either way let's go grab that okay and then we have Dark and Shallow Lies by Ginny Mayers Sane. And this one is a YA thriller with a town full of psychics and a secret that won't stay buried. So that's one of the books that you guys picked. Okay. Right, what else needs to go in? I think that's it really, except for things that I'm going to be using. So like my straighteners, makeup, adapter. I need to find that. Okay, so that's basically done. And sun cream. Actually, let me pack the sun cream now. That is probably going to go inside an actual wash bag. Okay, so let's see what last questions do we have, and then we'll finish up this video. Um, okay, so last couple of questions. Who is the person that inspires me most? Um, I'm not sure, really. I suppose lots of people different like, inspire me in different ways. Like, there's a few different YouTubers on here that inspire me. Um, Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction. I love her aesthetic and everything. Um, so she definitely inspires me. Also got Emmy and Carolyn Marie Reads. Carolyn Marie. Oh, I will have them both linked below. Um, they're amazing YouTubers again. So they. So there's lots of YouTubers that inspire me. The con content I want to create, the editing that I do, things like that. But yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure really. My favourite author. Um, I'm gonna say. I've already mentioned Charlotte Bronte. Um, think she's amazing. I, I feel hesitant to say that because I've only read one book by her. Um, I do want to read more by her, which I'm hopefully doing this month as well. So that was cemented because I do feel like it's a bit odd to say that I've got a favourite author if I've only read one of their books. But there's been so many authors that I love their works, um, like Erin Morganston, um, Susanna Clark, like fantastic authors, loved both of their books. So I don't know, it's a lot. But I feel like Jane Eyre, Charlotte Bronte, like, it's my favourite book, so kind of goes hand in hand. And then if I could go back in time, where would I go? Probably to, I don't know, to be honest, I want to say like the Edwardian in that era. But also at the same time, the privileges that we get now compared to back then, would I want to give that up? I don't know. I would want to go back there for the fashion and things like that. I think it would be lovely. But also the, the privileges that we get now you I would lose all of that so I don't know again actually maybe that was a bit of a cop out on the last three questions but there we go that's what it is this is very messy and I would say to you I'm gonna neaten this up but that would be a lie everything's in there the only thing I might do is just pop this in my bag so that my journal doesn't get wrecked and that's it that's it I've got a couple of things to add but they're last minute things things that I use every day and then I still have majority of the suitcase empty which is what I wanted so I still have this whole side of it empty because I do plan on doing shopping oh I forgot it wasn't on my list but sandals I'll put those in there as well that's it really I now need to sort out the stuff that's going in my hand luggage but again that's kind of last minute stuff and I just need to decide what bag I'm bringing for hand luggage so I don't actually have one that's big enough so whether I'm going to stick to just a tote bag or whether I'm going to go out and buy a bag tomorrow. No idea. Guess we'll see. But thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was entertaining or just something for you guys. For me, this was just keep me a bit more entertained while I was packing because, as I said, I hate packing and I'm amazing at it. Like, look at this. Perfection. It's a mess. It's going to do my partner's head in. And that's honestly half the reason why I do it because I've got to keep it fun for him. Um, but yeah okay I'm gonna go so thank you so much for watching if you did watch it to the end thank you so much and uh, let me know what do you rate my packing skills because 
they're on point, they are on fire. And let's put, I don't know if there is a suitcase emoji, but just do some sort of holiday emoji because that's what this video is. And uh, I will catch up with you soon. The next video should hopefully be the Thailand vlog. Fingers crossed. Let's see if it all goes to plan. But yeah, thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment to let me know that you're here. Social media links will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the next one.